or whatever, then that, that's the problem with self-care. If you are spending a ton of money because I need self-care, I need to go and get my hair done, I need to go spend $300 at the salon to get my hair recolored and to get a haircut and to do this and to do that and to get my eyelashes done and to get my nails done, that's where self-care is unhealthy. Hi, welcome back to Humble Homemaking. If you are new here, I talk about all things homemaking, parenting, faith, and femininity. So if that's your thing, then please subscribe. My name is Chelsea, I am a wife and a mother, and I am a homemaker. And this YouTube channel is one of my many hobbies, my many creative outlets. Still learning, but it's still fun. So today, I wanted to talk about self-care. I know, I know self-care gets a bad rep, because self-care comes with thinking solely about yourself. However, I do believe that there is an importance with caring for yourself, especially as mothers who take care of children, it is important to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves. Of course, as a Christian homemaker, my purpose is to serve God by serving others, and that means serving my family, taking care of my home. And I believe that God understands that we need to take care of ourselves. We need to make sure that we are staying spiritually, physically, and mentally healthy to make sure that we are in the best condition to take care of our homes and take care of our families and be as selfless as possible. It's not selfish to take a break from time to time. In fact, it's healthy. I'm not saying that you need to go on a mom strike or a wife strike, desert your husband or your children and demand that they wave a palm leaf in your face and call you a queen. No, that is not what I am saying. What I am saying is that it is okay to take a breather, to relax, and to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. Honor what God gave you by taking care of your temple. Your body is a temple, your mind resides in your body, your, the Holy Spirit resides inside of you. So make sure that you are taking care of all of the things that God gave you. There are seven things that I like to do when I get a moment to myself. The first one is very cliche, but Take a bubble bath, but here's the challenge. Don't go into the bubble bath with your phone or your iPad to watch a movie or watch Netflix. Instead, challenge yourself to go into the bathtub, read a book, read the Bible, or just sit there with your thoughts. Listen to some calm music. Enjoy the sounds of your house. Maybe your house isn't quiet. Whenever I take a bath, my husband is usually out in the other room watching Atlas, and Atlas is not quiet, but I don't mind. I don't mind hearing those the noises. I don't mind hearing them interact with each other. I don't want to mute out my life. I just want to be able to take a little breather. The second thing I like to do is make coffee or tea and go outside and enjoy the scenery, enjoy the fresh air. I've mentioned the importance of fresh air in a few videos of mine already. So we'll just leave it at that, but just go outside, breathe in some fresh air, and enjoy nature. The third thing I like to do is to get creative. Do some pottery, paint something, fix something around the house, do some sewing, do something that keeps my hands busy, but something that I enjoy doing. And I enjoy doing arts and crafts. I enjoy keeping my hands busy. So that's just something fun. The fourth thing I like to do is to take out a journal and brain dump. I have a journal specifically for dumping all the thoughts from my brain onto a piece of paper. Every single little blurb and thought that comes to my mind, I write it down and I give it up to God. A lot of good ideas come from doing that. Fifth thing is to go to a local coffee shop or a something local that you can go to with one of your girlfriends. You can sit there and you can chat with them and maybe if they have children too, then your then the children can play while you guys talk. But sometimes just getting out of your environment, which I've also mentioned in another video, is what you need. Maybe if you don't have a whole lot of female friends, maybe just even FaceTiming a friend or calling a friend and talking to them is also a good way to care for yourself because you are caring about the lives of others because you are able to get that self-care in by spending time with friends or talking to friends while at the same time enjoying social interactions which is, which are so healthy especially as homemakers. Sixth thing, if you have a little extra money in your budget, enjoy a spa day if possible. Enjoy a facial, get your nails done, go get your toes done. 
go get a haircut, maybe just a hair trim, get a re get a new color, but only if it fits your budget. Or if it doesn't fit your budget, do one at home. Maybe do a, a hair mask, give yourself a manicure or a pedicure. I do a facial routine at home where I do a face steam and then I do a mask and an exfoliation treatment and I finish off with a serum and it's just a really nice little at home spa day thing that I can do while my son is running around and playing and doing his thing and I don't have to worry about spending a ton of money at a spa so you have absolutely no way of getting a babysitter you do a pedicure while they're napping or make it fun what I do a lot because an atlas does not like to take naps is I will do a pedicure for myself and I will let him soak his feet in a little foot bath next to me. I don't paint his toes or anything, but I'll massage his little feet and I'll file his little nails. It makes him feel special and it gives me some time to do something that I want to do. Doing stuff at home is always an option. Just wanted to say a couple of things. Now self-care, the reason why I believe self-care gets a bad rep is because people use it as this way of saying everything will feel better as long as I go take a bath. That's where self-care is wrong. If your house is a mess and it's dirty and it's gross and you say that you need to go and soak in the bathtub before you go and clean your house, or that that's the problem with self-care. If you are spending a ton of money because I need self-care, I need to go and get my hair done, I need to go spend $300 at the salon to get my hair recolored and to get a haircut and to do this and to do that and to get my eyelashes done and to get my nails done, that's where self-care is unhealthy. If your environment does not match the amount of effort that you are putting into your self-care, and if your budget does not match the amount of money that you are putting into your self-care, that is where self-care gets dangerous and negative connotations are attached to the words self-care for that reason as well. That is all I have for this list and this video. If you did like it, please leave me a comment hit the like button, subscribe, and share. It really helps to grow this small channel. And if you have any other stay-at-home mom self-care tips to add to this list, leave it down below, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.